Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Attack the Backlog, uh, ATB Meets. Today, we are, it is my great, great, great pleasure to have an <laughs> industry legend, uh, Steve Mayles. If you're asking who he is, my goodness, educate yourselves. Uh, we are with the creator of Banjo Kazooie, amongst many other characters, Ukulele, uh, the best villain of all time, uh, Gruntilda, King K. Raw, uh, you know, Dixie Kong. Uh, as I, I said to, um, I mentioned to him just before we went on live that uh, I found over 200 characters that uh, he has worked on, and he has very kindly agreed to come here and discuss with us. Uh, you know, parts of his career, you know, and um, along the way, we're going to touch on the N64 days, the Super Nintendo days, all the way up to um, Playtonic and, you know, the evolution of the uh, platformer and how we arrived at Ukulele and what the future may hold, amongst other things. So it's my pleasure uh, to introduce to you, Steve Mayles. Welcome to the channel. Uh, how are you, good sir? Oh, I'm good. Thank you, uh, Michael. Thank you for in in inviting me to have a a chat about um the good old days the good old days as i remember them also um yeah so i, I guess I, was, I like to start by um asking you to um tell us a little bit of how you got into the industry i believe you were 18 years old which is insanely young uh to get to get us into the industry yeah i mean that was that was kind of um that was kind of about the age where you probably enter the industry in those days some people even younger um 16 probably just because um i say you know just to say it wasn't as professional as it is now you know makes it sound like people were making it up as they go along and they didn't know what they were doing which isn't the case at all but um but yeah now um Obviously, the, the the way to do it might be to get a degree and, and mm. go into it a, a bit later. But um, so yeah, I, I just finished my A levels, um, and yeah, I, I I left school and uh, I had an interview at um, at Rare. Uh, the company was still small enough in yeah. those days that um, the stampers actually did the was still doing interviews. Um, so I was interviewed by Chris and Tim, which was, you know, it, it was it was really exciting for me because i'd like idolize these um these people who as ultimate before rare ultimate played the game That's they'd right. like created some of my um favorite games on the uh on the sinclair spectrum yes so uh yeah and and, and they offered me a job yeah <laughs> <laughs> and well and, and i believe the first am i right thinking the first game you uh started working on was uh double dragon battle toads uh, it was yeah yeah which is, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a big game, you know, to, 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 to start. Now, that must have been an incredible experience and to be so young also. Uh, yeah, so I think I, I kind of, um, I sort of learned the ropes a little bit for um, a few months. I was just like sort of messing around with like the, um, like the editor to make the graphics and stuff. It was a lot less technical in those days. There wasn't so much stuff to learn. So um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't difficult stuff to learn. And then um, I, I guess I had a bit of a lucky break because um, Tim uh, Tim Stamper was doing mm. the graphics for the NES version of Battletoads Double Dragon, but he um, he'd started even then. Um, so this is like nineteen, um, probably like around the start of nineteen ninety three. Yes. He started to move um, towards looking at the um, the three D stuff. Um, like the alias um, 3D packages, uh, which would what became um, Donkey Kong Country. So, mm. so they needed somebody to take sort of take over what the little bits that were left to finish off on um, on Battletoads Double Dragon. So, um, I mean, he'd already done all the backgrounds, and he'd probably done like over fifty percent of the characters. He'd done all the hard stuff, so I was just left, um, which was perfect for me, like as a new starter, just to. Um, um, pick up what was left, really. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I and mean, of course, you know, when you're talking about Ren, a lot of people will straight away think about Donkey Kong Country. Um, that is, I would say, my happiest memory, happiest time of the Super Nintendo is Donkey Kong Country, I will say. And I, I, I played that game uh, one and two every year, without doubt. <laughs> um, I streamed it on my channel not that long ago, actually. And it, to me, it's still mind blowing how that game looks today and if you look at any other game 
on the Super Nintendo before Donkey Kong, they look generations apart. You know, like uh, my friend and I played you know, Super Mario not that long before it, and comparing those two games is just unbelievable. And so, I think I read a story a long time ago. Then a long time ago, then when you were uh, you guys at Rare were doing the pre-rendered graphics tests and showed it to Nintendo, they didn't believe it was running off of the Super Nintendo, I believe, right? I think they thought they, it was running off of PC or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's the case. I mean, you could see why anyone, you know, would, would come to that conclusion, really, because it yeah. did just look light years ahead of, yeah. of anything. I mean, we knew, you know, we, we knew we had a, a massive hit on our hands if, you know, if we could pull a good game together around these awesome mm-hmm. graphics, which thankfully we did. Um, it was just... Um, just trying to keep it secret really which was which was easier in those days because the you know the internet hadn't sort of properly yeah. caught on yet it was sort of talking about 93 94 so um and there was a great deal of secrecy at rare mm-hmm. um uh, only like the uh, people working on um the game could get in the building uh, so like the rest <laughs> of rare unless you had you know these special keys you couldn't even get in to see what we were doing which yeah was, you know which which is quite strange and then that sort of carried through then into the n64 days like each team was very very secretive and almost tribal about about the games which was um yeah which was interesting yeah i i, I remember i mean i remember specifically during the n64 days like you say there was no internet and social media and this kind of things but I remember even then you guys had, you know, just the reputation of being like the most secretive developers mm. around. And you would hear, I, I remember once um, coming across the N64 magazine and I think it was the first time anyone had ever seen Diddy Kong Racing. It was just on the front cover. No one had heard a word about it before. It's that That's how it came. And I, I remember thinking, and I don't think it was that far away from launch uh, when it was first shown, but I remember just every game that you guys worked on would have that level of secrecy and you know and it, it, it was but it was really exciting you know because like i say they'd come out and it would you know on the entity 4 i think i've said this plenty of times on my channel that i think it's you guys at rare is the most prolific i think i've ever seen a developer and not just in terms of the amount of games that you released, which is insane. I mean, on the SD4 alone, we had like Blast Corps and, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Donkey Kong 64, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, mm. um, Jet Force Gemini, Diddy Kong Race. It was just the volume, but the quality was... Uh, I've said this plenty of times. I thought rivaled and in a lot of cases exceeded Nintendo's own um, catalogue on the N64. Um so were you guys aware of because i feel like amongst nintendo fans during that time rare was very special special company i I I think like most nintendo fans just adored you guys you know and and saw and and held you right up there with nintendo did you guys were you aware of that you know that that love that nintendo fans had for you yeah i think we got we got a sense of that um i mean I, i was lucky enough to go to um some of the shows in the states um, so I went in um, 94 with uh, DKC, mm. which was um, amazing. And then again in 97 with um, with Banjo. And by going to the shows, you really get a sense of um, how, you know, how, how people like you say that they really do, you know, hold hold these games in, in, in high regard. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and I've um, going back to, Donkey Kong Country I've heard you say I think in another interview before that um, one of if not your most proudest moment was showing off Donkey Kong at uh, CES for the first time and yeah yeah I can I can you know I can still recall it now you've said yeah. that yeah so like we were um we we're like in this sort of auditorium at this I don't know where it was some hotel somewhere is like the um the pre-show Nintendo press event or, or something. So they're showing on these like big screens and it all comes up and like, you know, p- people were just gobsmacked and then they dropped the bombshell that it's coming out, you know, on the super Nintendo yes. for, for Thanksgiving and <laughs> people were like, you know, that they, they just couldn't believe it. Yeah. And Nintendo did such a great job on the stand, um, you know, with, with the jungle theme of, um, of, of Donkey Kong, the, the, the whole, I think half the Nintendo stand was Donkey Kong, yeah. which for me is my first, sort of um my first trip abroad my first um show 
um, with this game was just incredible. And, you know, I'm not likely to top that, really. <laughs> I mean, it was, I, I was, I think, 11 when it came out. And I still remember the TV advert for it. I remember being at home. I, I remember <laughs> pretending to be sick so I could stay at home and play it, you know. And uh, I remember the advert saying 100, I think it's 111 levels and this kind of stuff. And I just remember thinking, I'd never seen anything look any way close to how beautiful that game looked, you know, and I love the pre-rendered graphics, the, the, um, it, it, not just how beautiful the, the, the backgrounds were and the levels, the music was incredible, but the, the amount of personality that the, all the, the, the characters in the game had, um, you know, of course, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, uh, King, King K. Rool to this day is like my favorite villain in any <laughs> game, you know, um, in fact, I remember playing uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns and, and uh, Tropical Freeze and being really upset that he's not in it. And I, was, I have no idea why he's not in those <laughs> games. It's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, traumatizing. But um, what was it like knowing that you have this massive Nintendo IP and that you're reintroducing it? And, and for yourself, what was it like having the responsibility to create, you know, like these characters in those games? You know, I think, I think I've created Rambi, and on guard, and of course, King K. Rool, and later on, you know, Dixie Kong, and in, 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 in amongst other characters. W was there a big pressure on yourself to, you know, out, almost outdo yourself in, in knowing um, that? I think I think at the start it was um, quite difficult for me because I because um, we, we we only had a few like of these SG machines like mm. running the 3D software in the early days, so. Uh, like Tim Stample was on it and Kev Bayless, like the, the head of graphics, he was on it as well. So he gave me a bit of a, um, a help at the start because it, it's quite a steep learning curve going from like the little bitmap sprites yes. from like Battletoads Double Dragon up into like full, um, like, um, you know, 3D wireframe stuff. You know, it was kind of, you know, mind blowing really. So, um, so, so Kev had got some more experience. So, um, he helped me quite a bit at the start. So he uh, he created Diddy and modeled Diddy. Mm -hmm. um, he um, he did the concept for Donkey Kong and and modeled Donkey Kong. Although I, I can remember doing some elements. Yes. Of Donkey Kong. So I remember um, um, like Miss, when it came back, um, Mr. Miyamoto he he suggested mm. putting the tie on, which was you know a genius idea. Yeah. And I'm there thinking, I have no idea how to add in a skeleton <laughs> to an existing skeleton. I remember yeah. Kev had to, had to um, sort that out because I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't have a clue. It was, um, yeah. So so Kev did some of the um, early concepts as well. Mm. Um, I think I yeah I, I modelled them up. So Kev like did the animal concept so yeah. so so he so he, he he gave me some help at the start but once i was up and running uh, and you know kind of what you're doing the pressure is off then really because um you, you know you know you can just get on with the job then and um and tim stamp who was in charge of the project he was very um He's very hands off, really. I think with the characters, he wasn't like in there saying, "No, no, do it like this. You've done mm. it wrong." You know, I want to see this. I want to see that. You know, I, I can't remember hardly any any occasions where he come in and say, "Oh, you know, have you tried this? Can you do that?" You know, he was just happy just to let me get on with it. Yeah, you know, which was great for my um, confidence as well. So I, I was just there, you know, um, till till midnight um, most nights, as a few of us were. Else, the project never would have got done. And I wouldn't have wanted to be any place else anyway. You, yeah. know, you know, absolutely loving it. You know, still at midnight, still working away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah. So, but so. It's, it's incredible. Pro I mean, I imagine you, you must have been twenty or so. And, mm, yeah, yeah. You know, to be given the responsibility of re you know reintroducing one of Nintendo's most important IPs is just an inc you know incredible. Uh, just an adventure to be on i imagine um where, where did your inspiration come from for um king k rule uh because i i think <laughs> i think he just has so much personality and you know so much menace to him uh <laughs> but such a you know comical kind of aura about him that you know i, I don't know i just wonder well, where did you get your inspiration from? um so a concept for um king k rule already existed mm -hmm. um it was um, 
a lot a lot more of a serious character though it was for a, um, a different game it was like going to be a sort of a point and click adventure on the mac that never that never happened um so that's where the kremlin name came from so that was taken into um donkey kong so i i redid him um to suit the style of of the other characters and um and uh, greg my brother like wrote him as this kind of you know, a bit of an idiot villain, which is what we always do. Grunty is an idiot villain. Yeah. Um, Baron Von Gaul, you know, they're always slightly unhinged, slightly incompetent. You know, they want to be really evil, but they can't quite manage it. It's that, yeah. You know, they're just too incompetent. Capital B as well. <laughs> yes, yes. So we've carried on that tradition, absolutely. <laughs> I think when you're making these sorts of games, that's, that's the template you want to be aiming for, really. You know, no one wants to see it. King K. Rule in and come and rip Donkey Kong's head off. No, no, <laughs> no. Do you remember what? Uh, did you ever see Mi Miyamoto's uh, reaction to the final game at all? Um, Donkey which, Kong Country, I should say. Which, which reaction was that? Oh, no, no. I mean, just in general. I mean, did, did, did you ever. Oh, I thought you were going to come up with some controversial no, stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I just imagine what it would be like to show him the final game. And, and, and... Um, not really. I mean, um... <sighs> The, the, the sort of a few of the team had like um, a, a meeting with him. I think a meeting at Rare. And I, I remember when we went to the um, the show in uh, Chicago, um, the CES. It was then. It wasn't. It was yes. pre E three because mm -hmm. it's so old. Um, <laughs> um, you know, we, we had a meeting with him then. Uh, we, you know, which was a, a very humbling experience. Even though you know I wasn't really a huge Nintendo. Um, fan yes. but of course everyone knows who mr miyamoto is so um so i mean yeah he got the impression that um yeah yeah he liked it but um but i don't but you know he was he's quite hard to read really so yeah i suppose you'll never really know what he truly thinks of it but i, I mean him and tim um stamp had like a regular dialogue about it and he'd come back with suggestions and ideas and stuff some would implement some we wouldn't so i think it was a it was from what i could see it was you know a, a very good working relationship yes definitely um were you ever because the the i remember the time before donkey kong country came out sega were you know very much on Nintendo's heels and pushing hard to take their crown. And I, I believe they overtook them a couple of uh, years in a row, you know, um, sales wise. And it was only when Donkey Kong Country came out that it pushed the Super Nintendo ahead again. Um, and, but that area is kind of seen almost as the biggest console war era still, I, I, I would think. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so were, were you guys, or, you know, how, how aware were you of, you know, that, that background noise, you know, the, the, the and, and, what you uh, what this game that you was really special might do to 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 um i suppose give nintendo some space you know some breathing room obviously um yeah i mean i think you know developers like myself not so much i guess the bosses of of, of rare were uh, mm -hmm. i mean i know nintendo wanted to they wanted a product that rivaled um it was Aladdin, um, Aladdin on the um, the Mega yes. Drive. It, you know, it, it came out. It had the uh, the cool like Disney animations, and, yes. and it was really nice. And I think Nintendo, you know, said to Rare, you know, we want we want to use this, um, you, know, you know, your 3D technology to have, you know, to do something similar to Aladdin. And I think you know we obviously um, surpassed that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And so I suppose. That moves us to the N64 um, era, which I would probably regard as my favorite generation of game and still, I think. Um, I, 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 you know, I loved my time with the N64. Um, and as I said, you know, the top of all my memories, I think if my, te my top 10 favorite memories of gaming, probably seven of them are, are you know, to do with Rare. Um, and I, rem I remember as many people when Mario 64 came out, uh, you know, it was widely seen as the best game ever made. Uh, and I, I think I thought the same at the time. I was floored by it. I thought it was like playing a cartoon, you know. And, uh, but I remember, and I am one of those people that uh, swears by Banjo-Kazooie being even better. Uh, I remember the day I bought Banjo-Kazooie and I was just floored, you know. Um, I, I would compare it to Mario 64 all the time. And I love Mario 64, but... 
I saw this world where, it, again, to me, it almost looks like generations apart. You know, like the detail in the character models alone, you know, Banjo Kazooie or Romero, or Romero, for example, was just so rich. The worlds were really vibrant and big. You know, um, you had the the duo, you know, so the uh, mechanics that you had with Banjo and Kazooie together, the way you utilized them to navigate the world, to, you know, combat, um, the music, the boss fights. Um, how. You know, how, how, God, how, how was it making that game, having seen the reaction of Mario 64 and almost, I imagine seeing, you know, everybody saying this is the greatest game ever made. This is what we're almost going to try and beat now. How, 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 how was that? Were, were you inspired by any of your Mario 64? You know, were you, you know, what, what did you think of it uh, in regard to pushing forward with, uh, with uh, Banjo-Kazooie, sorry? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, very much so. I mean, um I think without Mario 64 coming out when it did, Banjo Kazooie would have been a very different game because mm. uh, we were we were struggling a little bit to find a direction with it. I mean, it had. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know how much of the history you know about it, like coming from like Project Dream. Like, yes. So it started as Super Nintendo, then, um, then it was like the end of the Super Nintendo's life. So we thought, oh, what's the point in making this game? You know, by mm. the time we finish it, we're going to be onto a new console. So it moved to the N64. And then the N64 couldn't really, despite being the world's most powerful console at the time. I couldn't. think it was the more powerful than the machine, <laughs> the machine that put the man on the moon, they said something like that, wasn't it? That was like yeah. the tagline. <laughs> well, whatever. We couldn't have three characters <laughs> running around anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so um, yeah. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, so, so this adventure game we wanted to make called Dream couldn't be made um, on the N64. Um so that got so the, the main character was taken over by a bear at some point, which mm. sounds a bit random, but I'm sure at the time it was perfectly logical. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, and then it, it turned into like this this two and a half, a bit like a two and a half D type game. Um, a bit like was it um, was it Pandemonium? On yeah, the yeah, on PlayStation yeah. PlayStation yeah. One. Yes, uh, it, it was a little bit like that for a while. Wow. And then I think it, it wasn't until we saw how wonderful Mario's like complete um, free freedom of 3D was like that that we thought oh yeah you know that this is you know this is what we need to be doing so 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 Mario 64 was definitely a big inspiration on um, on Banjo Kazooie. And of course, we could never match their frame rate, which is something we're all jealous about. But <laughs> well, I mean, we, we went down the more detailed, yeah, uh, sure. more graphical, slightly more, you know, adventure rich worlds um, vibe than the 60 frames per second. You know, we, we were probably lucky to get 12 in some places. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And it, you know what? It's, it's tougher than I remember. I, I streamed it not uh, not long ago when they um, re-released it on the, you know, the uh, N64 <laughs> Um, sorry, the, uh, the Switch Online um, package, and so I, I I streamed it, and I thought it's it's tougher than I remember. A lot of it's uh, pretty tough. Um, the camera again, the camera. I mean, the camera is something <clears throat> I feel like games struggled with for multiple generations. I feel like that took a long time for developers to really get grips with that. But I mean, even that was a big step up over uh, Mario Mario sixty four's um, own camera. I thought. Um, but uh, and so and so, how about Oak Run Tilda? Where, where did you get your inspiration for her, her design? Um, I don't know really. I mean, it had, um, all the characters um, would come from Greg, so he'd like uh, he was like head of the uh, head of the team. Um, yes, my brother. So he'd have like oh, yeah. he'd just like write a one line thing, like or maybe he'd draw like a tiny little picture he'd always draw. Hmm. Uh, so you know, oh, you know. Um, it, you know, something like Wicked Witch, Enemy of Banjo, or something like that. Yeah. And then, um, um, which was great for, um, you know, f for me, because then you can just, you know, you, you've got a blank, kind of a blank canvas, then you can just go off and make what you want. But again, it, it was, um, we, we didn't, we hardly wasted any work on Banjo. There was no one saying, like, oh, you know, that's not what I've got in my head. Do it again, do it again. Mm. You know, it was just, because if that did happen, you know, the game would have taken years rather than the 18 months or whatever it took um, when we got up and running. So, um, uh, yeah, just Wicked Witch. That was it, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, how do you feel? Because it's, I feel like the game, well, it's over 20 years old, isn't it now? And 
people still love these characters. I mean, I've got to ask you, 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 you know, what your reaction was when you saw them on Smash, because as I believe, I think when Nintendo released that kind of voting uh, thing that they did, you know, to see what people wanted, I believe uh, the thought was that Banjo Kazooie was at the top. Banjo Kazooie was the the top of the vote, I believe. Um, and I, I remember watching it live. I remember my friends watching it. I remember things blowing up. Um, I lost my mind when I saw uh, Banjo Kazooie. How did you feel? I imagine it must be strange also for you. You know, uh, see, was it a new design, slightly different design, but you know, it seeing your characters on a game that you haven't worked on must be a little strange. I imagine it is. It is. It is strange. Um, I mean, thankfully, you know, they did a really good job. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it is strange to see something so familiar. To think, did I work on that? Oh no, I didn't. Did I? It's, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> it, it's kind of weird. And it was almost like a time warp back to nine ninety eight because they had the whole level. They had some of the other characters. Yeah. Grunty, the little, uh, I don't know why he got a starring role, but the little <laughs> dragonfly dude, yeah. he was in there. I it think they had really... the Jinjos as well, I think. Yeah, was. the yeah, Jinjos. Yeah, yeah. Um, was bottles there, I can't remember. There was buttons, yeah. Of course, King uh, K. Rool was there also as well. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was really, really, really cool, really nice. You know, it was, it was a real sort of flashback. And in many ways, it was, um, because obviously when we released DKC and Banjo, there yeah. wasn't the internet, so you couldn't see people's reactions to stuff. But here, you know, you've got, you know, reactions kind of 24-7. Oh, instant, you, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the, the internet was... I remember that, that that whole weekend, the internet was insane, you know. And uh, I think I'd, I said it for ages, like, those are the three characters I wanted. I wanted Banjo, Kazoo, and... I just wanted to see King K. Rool again. That's, I don't know where this guy's gone. I just wanted to see him again. Uh, so for me, for me, it was incredible. Um, well, so I wanted to ask because, uh, so the N64 marked the, I suppose, the end of the relationship uh, between Rare and Nintendo. And uh, and then they were later acquired by Microsoft. Uh, and I, re- I remember for me, myself, uh, again, because there was no internet and this kind of stuff, I remember reading it. I, get, I think it was an N64 magazine again. And I remember being distraught, you know, it, it was like being broken up with a girlfriend or, you know, like your favorite <laughs> band disappearing. It, it was, and I remember going to school and, you know, all my friends were big Nintendo fans and like, it was a dark day. I remember like we were just, we were super <laughs> just, no one wanted to talk to each other. It was so depressing, you know, because they, you know the catalog that you'd build and we kind of just saw rare and nintendo together forever i think you know um and so it was i just remember it being really depressing day um but how, that must have been chaos behind the scenes uh for, or maybe not i don't know for you guys what, what was what was that like and and how was it how was the transition and what was the differences maybe you know in being at nintendo and then in microsoft for you guys yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was chaos somewhere, but um, you know, on the on on the shop floor, as it were, it was just business as usual. Mm. I mean, we were doing um, we were doing goalies, grabbed by the goalies. Yes. Um, you know, specifically, it was a Nintendo game. Um, so we worked on that for about a year on the GameCube, and that had to be sort of converted over to the Xbox, which he's you know, so the program has handled all that. So, so there there was nothing, you know for me to do really there and you know i naively thought we'd just carry on um as as we had you know oh it's it, you know it's rare but you know now we're on xbox we well, you know uh, i guess i foolishly thought all the nintendo fans would follow yeah. and, I, and i suppose microsoft did to some extent which is why they bought rare but that didn't happen um you know ghoulies didn't get very good um reviews i think Part of that was to do with this whole hangover from, you know, the, the Nintendo you know, split. Um, I think, you know, o- over the years, people realise it is it's actually um, it's actually a fun, a, a really fun game. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so that was hard to take, really. Mm. Um, you know, the fact that we'd worked hard on this game, you know, put the same um, level of polish and attention to yeah. detail, the same production values as, as we had with, like, the Banjo games, because it was yeah. the same team, essentially. And then, you know, to have it not succeed, because this is this was the sort of first game that really I'd, I'd had at Rare that that wouldn't be considered a success. So, mm. you know, and then, and then you, you're kind of thinking, oh, you know, how long is this going to last for this kind of you yeah. know, negative reaction to rare and Microsoft? Mm. And, you know, it, it did last 
quite a few years. Yeah. Do you think is that because do, do you think the the audience on Xbox at the time a different sort of audience and you know to what games they're yeah. likely to buy? I think. Yeah, totally. Which is yeah. part of the reason why Microsoft bought Rare to to kind of um, to bring in the yeah. um, the family audience, but you know it it, it was. It, it was going to be a lot. It was clear it was going to be a long job. You know, it wasn't going to be one game. You know, everyone by Google is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's clear it was going to be a long job. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think everyone had mixed feelings at the time. Um, mm. I mean, obviously, um, a lot of people had worked closely with Nintendo for a long time and had a lot of success. But um, I know there was quite a lot of changes at the top of Nintendo. Yeah. There was quite a lot of retirements and stuff. People the Stampers used to work with weren't there anymore. And I think they felt it was time, you know, it was their company. They could do what, what they want with it, really. Um, yeah. Uh, even though I'm sure they thought they were, you know, making, um, you know, the right decision at the time. Um, yeah. And because I know you, after that, you worked on, I think it's, well, a couple of Kinect uh, sports games, which I mean, they were a big deal. Also, you know, the, 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 oh, you know, the, the, the Connect Nuts was a very good piece of um, hardware. Don't, of don't forget Banjo Nuts and Bolts. Banjo Nuts and Bolts. Don't forget Banjo Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> which is and, another game that again was slagged off when it um, came out because yeah. you know it wasn't what people wanted from a banjo game. But over the years, they they realised you know it is actually a good game, but well, maybe I've, not, but yeah. not a good banjo kazooie game. That's what I feel, I yeah. Say, I yeah. feel like if you look back on it though. It, it it is well received and you know it, it is a good game like you say um and i think that even the reviews reflect that um it's i, I think also that, you know during that time especially i feel like video game fans were quite tribal so you know it's almost like you, you know like um like now i feel like a lot of people buy multiple consoles you know and i feel like back then maybe you'd buy one console and you you just weren't allowed to like the others you <laughs> yeah. know and i think that's what it was and i think that's yeah, because yeah. when you're a kid you can't afford to buy one more, more than one console i think it's that kind of thing mm, uh, mm. whereas i feel like now today's time i think i think that wouldn't happen as much i think people would be a lot more receiving of these kind of things happening uh you know so, so, so it's, a, it's a shame um and so you know we have to talk then about uh, you are of course one of the founding members of platonic uh platonic games and so why what was the reasoning for leaving rare and uh, starting up uh, Platonic? Um, I, I, I guess I was just feeling a bit disillusioned at, at, at Rare. I, I didn't really feel like, um, you know, I, I could sort of do my best work there anymore, like stuff I used to do in the past. I felt the way sort of Rare operated didn't really play to my strengths mm. anymore. So I saw the opportunity... Um, when Gav, um, Gavin Price, the, um, you know, the head of Platonic, um, you know, uh, I, I was, you know, t talking to him and the opportunity arose to kind of be in with Platonic right at the start. Yes. Um, you know, so I, I, I took that opportunity. It was, you know, it, it was, it was a gamble, but I thought it was a gamble worth taking. And uh, thankfully, um, it paid off. Oh, but massively. I uh, well, yeah. I mean, I was looking over it because I remember when the Kickstarter came out for Ukulele, uh, which I backed. My ad, I backed day oh, thank one. You, thank um, you. <laughs> I, I mean, but I was just one of many who, you know, when you read, it's like you know the core team that Banjo Kazooie and Donkey Kong, and I think at that time it's what a lot of people really wanted, you know, because I, f I do feel like it was a time where the industry was being swamped with uh, shoot 'em ups specifically. Uh, and I was one of them, you know, but, but it was just too many, too many. And I think, I think people wanted to see the platformer come back. And of course, you know, they remembered you guys so funnily, um, you know, that they jumped on. And I, I remember, I think you reached your goal in like 38 minutes, mm, which, is, right, yeah. <laughs> which was a record yeah. then. And I believe you topped 2 million in, I think it was under 24 hours. I think it was. I think, it, yeah, I think, I think it was, a, I think it was a million in, um, a million in, in, 24, in hours. 24 hours. Yes. And then the, the total, total was just over 2 million, I think. Two yeah. Million. So that, I, I imagine that must have felt, incredible to know oh, it that. was it was yeah it was it was one of those you know I, I i wasn't sure i'd have you know a moment like that again mm. in my in my career you know um to rival sort of uh, donkey kong and banjo but but here we are like um you know 
um, sort of 20 years or whatever after those games, um, you know, here we are with another um, um, great moment. Yeah, it, it yeah. was um, it was fantastic. We were all blown away by the by the response, but it, it was it was the right thing at the right time and the yeah. right you know the right names in the team as well. I mean, we, we played a lot on this spiritual uh, spiritual successor. Um, you know, we we worked uh, really hard on that. Um, you know, oh, Steve Mills, Craig Banjo, and and Chris Sutherland. Yeah. Um, um, you know, program of banjo and Steve Hurst environments on on, on banjo kazooie. So, I know Gav Gavin had been um, looking at sort of Kickstarter for a few years, saying, "Oh, you know, we should do this." You know, look how well he'd, he'd be quoting all these other games, saying, mm. "Look how look how well they've done." You know, I think we can do something similar. And um, thankfully, it did all it, it did all work out. Oh, it was a great. I think, like you say, I, I think it's. It came at the right time. I think it's what people wanted. I, I, I remember I've been so excited for it. I remember I was right back to it. it was originally for the Wii U, and then it moved. The production moved over to the Switch, of course. Um, and I think I was working a night shift when it came out, and I was secretly playing it at work. <laughs> and, um, but I was so excited. And it was everything I wanted. You know, it's just really colorful. The Yuka and Lady was just a perfect duo, you know, full of personality. The music, I think, was it uh, Grant uh, Kirk Hope who came back and did a bunch of the music? He did, yeah, did yeah. David Weiss do some of the music? He did. Well? He did. He, he, yeah. Dave did some stuff as well, yeah. 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 And so, like, you know, to me, it was just a perfect, perfect game and what we wanted. Uh, and I feel like whenever I talk to Nintendo fans, they, remember it very very fondly um and so after that like, and i don't think it was too long was it like just over a year when uh luke ukulele impossible lair came out like I don't, I don't feel like it was that long after launch of the switch game uh, i think it's probably two years, so, two years? So, so so the switch i mean oh. well i suppose yes because the switch version came out after the other it versions did, yeah That's so why, yes so it initially so the first game came out, I think it was April 2017. The Switch version came out in, I think it was December 2017. Yes. And Impossible Lair would have come out around October 2019, I think. Yes, I think you're so, right. Yes, exactly. And so, yeah. So it didn't feel like a quick game when we were working on it. I mean, you're like looking at two years probably. So. Yeah. It, well, I, I played it when it came out and I've been playing it all day yesterday and today in preparation for this interview. And I think I heard someone else say online, they forgot how tough the game was. And the game is like devilishly, you know, tough, you know, and it's almost, but like in a fair way, you know, Which I, that impossible layer, impossible layer, exactly. Mm, you know, mm. it reminds me of um, the jump from Donkey Kong 1 on the Super Nintendo to Donkey Kong Country 2, where Donkey Kong 1 is still pretty tough when you play today, but Donkey Kong Country 2 is that game is unbelievably tough. And I feel the same about layer, like I was. I think on the second or third level yesterday, and I, I must have died 25 times. And uh, yes. was smiling the whole time, you know, because <laughs> it was it was like a fair death, you know. You always thought you could do better each time. Um, and so I so I was I guess I wanted to ask you uh, the obvious is why go from 3D uh, to 2D? Um, because I've heard you say before that some people thought that was an easy way out uh, or, or like an easy route to take, uh, which I don't agree with, um, principally because. I feel like on 2D games, you've got nowhere to hide, you know, like, mm. you know, the controls have to be, if anything is bland or not working right, it stands out really easily, you know, so the controls have to be really tight, you know, the puzzles have to be really clever, mm. Mm. or these things are noticed, you know, and playing it today, uh, first of all, it's a beautiful, beautiful game, I forgot how gorgeous that game is, um, but the mechanics, you know, of, of the level design, you know, um, the way you can really interact, um, Yes, I just think it's a really, 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 you know, well, well made game. Um, but what was the thought? Uh, I think at the start, we've always said at Playton, you know, we want to do, um, you know, test ourselves with like different um, genres. I think mm. if you, if, you know, if, if we, the easiest thing would have been to just churn out like Ukulele 2 and have another yeah. 3D platformer. But, um, you know, if, if the design team, aren't enthusiastic about that you know it's probably going to be an inferior product so i think that was part of the reason that that um the the design team um especially gav who runs platonic you know mm. he, he wanted to challenge himself and and make a um i mean for for, for want of a better phrase a spiritual successor to dkc really yeah yeah i mean it's, it's 
it's, I mean, I was again, I was playing it today, and there's so many things that stuck out to me, and some very brave choices. You know, it's just the fact that you can try and attempt to finish the game from the start if you want to. You try and attempt to, yeah, possible, which I tried, <laughs> not going to happen. But, uh, but, but you know that, or the the way the um, uh, which was the, the overworld map actually mm, works mm. which is almost like a game in its in itself yeah, you know yeah, hidden yeah. puzzles and yeah and tonics that change the way you know levels you can go back and play levels completely differently uh there's a lot of innovation in this game um you know and and was was that uh, how much of, of that was a focus in, in in development um for for, for, for you guys yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we didn't just want to do a, a carbon copy of, of DKC. There are elements in there that, um, you know, um, kind of are that, like, you know, like the blast barrel things we have are equivalent little bush pot things, whatever they are. I can't remember. Um, but then you do have the whole overworld, um, which is something um, completely different, really, in this um, genre of games. I think it works really well because it breaks up. You know the the, the frantic platforming of the two yeah. level two D levels. You know you've finished a two D level. You know you can chill out a bit now in in the overworld. It doesn't it, you know you, you don't have to be on edge and stuff. So yeah, I, I think it, it turned out really nice, really well, really well. Definitely, and I imagine you must have gone through many designs of uh, both uh, Ukraine lately. You know the, what what was uh, some of those? I think I've heard you say before you started out as a tiger. I want to say. Yeah, oh. yeah, it, it was it was the tiger that got <laughs> sort of um, most traction, I think, early on. Even though it, it never made it into three D, but once I, I'd like done a quick sketch of the chameleon, it didn't really change drastically. I mean, the, the first one had the like the kind of um, the crest design. Yeah, I'm just just looking at a picture on the wall. So like, the crest design on the on, on the head, even though the the arms and the legs were really tiny and it wasn't suitable for like a platform character really yeah um but 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 the head in particular hardly changed at all um and lately was kind of um didn't really change much from the start just some little nips and tucks here and there um but something i never did i never i never drew them together Mm. so they only ever came together in 3d so I mean, I kind of had it in my head that yeah, they'll they'll be good together. So, but I, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> these days I'm sure you draw hundreds of pictures of the characters in various poses and expressions together just to make. But you know, we 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 didn't have much money, we didn't have much mm-hmm. time. So, um, I I, th- I thought the characters um, were good. Yeah, um, yeah, they're full of puss. I mean, they are. They're they're. I feel like you, you know, you could you can look at your games and you know, I was to say a red game, but you know when it's a platonic game now. You know, it's, it's, it has that it, the personality your characters have. They still have that trademark humor. You know, I literally came across a part today in the game where a trouser lifts up a, a, a gate and literally calls it the paywall. You know, that you have to get through. <laughs> game, you know, and I just chuckled to myself. And so you still have that vintage humor that your, your games uh, have, which is just amazing. Uh, one question though, if you had to choose. Or you can only choose one, you can Lely or Banjo Kazooie characters. You're stuck on an island. Who would you keep as company? Oh my god, um, <laughs> as company. Oh, I don't know. Um, oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? It's like choosing between your children. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it could be Selfie's either. Choice. I don't think it could be either Kazooie or Lely because they're just a bit too hyper. Yeah. Um, oh. Banjo's voice might annoy me. I was going to say, yeah, y- um, Yuka seems a bit more chill. Yeah, I think it has to be Yuka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard you say before in the past uh, that you weren't happy with um, your design of Candy Kong. Oh, well, well, yeah, we're going back now, aren't well, we? Well, what's, yeah. what's your beef with that? I think, I think most people really like uh, uh, Candy Kong. What, 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 would you do anything different? Oh, it's just... Uh, I mean, doing like the the sort of female characters mm. um they're always a bit trickier anyway and especially female kind of primates in particular yeah. <clears throat> i find them quite difficult <laughs> yeah and I, I i i remember at the time um you know I, I thought oh she can't be like you know she can't have a pose like dk be on all fours it's just not gonna work <laughs> no. I thought, oh, what's the alternative and, and and she came out like she had this kind of human like st- hourglass body with yeah. like this strange monkey head on top <laughs> and i'm like oh my god 
But um, but yeah, yeah, I guess it, it made it in there. And I mean, I think in subsequent games, um, she got a lot better. Yeah. Um, in the was it? I can't remember what she looked like in in the other DK games. I mean, she wasn't in DKC two. Was she in DKC three? I thought she was. Was she in DKC three? I want to say that had Junior Junior Kong as well, of course, didn't it? Oh, the Kitty Kitty, uh, Kitty, Kitty Kong, Kong yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But she she definitely improved on uh, in um, DK sixty four. I think yeah. she, you know, she was improving by then. So. Yeah. <laughs> do you have um, Do you have a, a all time favorite character of yours? That you're, you're most proud of or you're most fond of? Because, um, I mean, you've, like, as we said before, you've created an insane amount. Uh, of yeah, the, you're uh, coming up to 30 years now, no? uh, creating yeah, new characters. It is, so. yeah. It'll be 30 years. 30 in, years um, coming up. 30 years in June, yeah. yeah. So. I don't know. That's a really hard one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think recently, I mean, Yuka was, uh, a, you know, a really strong character, but I probably always have to side with Banjo, really, just because it mm. uh, might be a bit of a cop out, just because of his popularity, really. <laughs> Barbie's probably for a reason, isn't he? You know, he's, uh, he's lasted this whole time, and people haven't forgot about him or the game. So, you know, um, it's funny when I, I was thinking about uh, Impossible Lair again, and you know, you said you draw the comparison between uh, that and it being a spiritual successor of uh, Donkey Kong Country, and at least on the when's it's been since the switch you know people have been yearning for a new donkey kong country game for a long time so i think we had tropical freeze but that was a remaster wasn't it with the wii u game mm. uh <clears throat> would you would you as a company as playtime be open this if nintendo let's say you know approached you one day and said you know we'd like you to make a, a, a you know a, a donkey kong country game for us how, how would you feel uh, so if, about that if the uh if the man from nintendo turned up with mm. a, a bulging suitcase full of <laughs> yeah, um full of full of, full of full coins of, full of dollars or yeah. whatever yeah. yeah um yeah i'm i'm sure i'm sure we'd absolutely love to do that yeah i mean to be you know it'd be really strange but really cool for us to you know because uh, there's a few of us that worked on the donkey kong game yeah. so um yeah, it's almost like going full circle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, maybe incredible. that'll be maybe that'll be my last game. You know, come full circle. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll get we'll finally get King K. Rule to come back. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what we. Well, want. yeah, I hope so. I, I hope he does come back in the next one. I, I, you know, I'm sure he will. I mean, ha- they can't ignore him now, can they? No way. You know, his popularity is insane now. You know, um, well, th- th- actually, well, that's a funny one. It brings me to there. So recently, we've seen this. You know. I don't know what's going on at the moment where Microsoft, Microsoft seems to be acri- acquiring every developer they can and, and uh, Sony is rec- you know, acqu- acquiring who they can. And Nintendo have been very you know, quiet on that front. Um, but, and, and, but I do hear a lot of, of course, a lot of Nintendo fans uh, talk about this, you know, who they think Nintendo should try and acquire. And I feel <laughs> like the two companies always come out of uh, yourselves and uh, Platinum Games. And so... You know it, how, how you know how how do you feel about something like that? Uh, 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 do, you, do you think Platon would be open to something uh, like that, or would you just prefer to stay independent and you know almost have your own say and you know make the games that you want to play uh, that you want to make uh, for yourselves? Is that? Um, I mean that that was always like that was always the plan at the start was to mm. stay completely independent. Yes, but, um, you know. Um, I'm, I'm sure that I'm, I'm I, you know, I can't speak for the big bosses, no. so um, uh, it, it's it's tough for me to answer that one, really. Yeah, um, I, I, I was as a Nintendo fan, I, I would, I always say, God, it'd be a dream to have played on it. I think, I think, um, you know, you the 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 the, the quality that you guys show in your games are just uh, immense, and I'm always very excited to see what you're working on next. Which, of course, I have to ask you, you know, what is what is the future of Platonic? Will we see ukulele again in 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 the in the, in the, in the, no, no, the near future? When can we expect? When can we expect to see you guys again? Basically, um, yeah, we're we we're, we're working we're working hard on stuff. Still as secretive uh, as ever. <laughs> well, yeah, we we yeah yeah. I mean, um, you might um, know that we um pub- we've started publishing games now yes. as well under like the Platonic Friends. 
label but that's not really taking any developers away from um you know platonic making games so we are still making the games and what we're doing at the moment is looking awesome but of course i can't say any more than that (laughs) um i didn't expect that you would (laughs) yeah uh, so 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 the next platonic games will be uh will be a platonic published game yes um as as for the you know platonic games themselves ukulele i don't know we'll we'll just have to see (laughs) yeah well do you think well I, I, you know, I, I know, of course, you know, the, the, as I say, you know, the ukulele games, the two that you've released have been incredible. Um, and I know you said you wanted to try uh, different genres. Um, what, what, what kind of genre do you think interests you the most uh, in terms of uh, incorporating ukulele into, do you think? Hmm. Um. I can't, I'm not going to answer that because all I can think of is the games we're working on at the moment <laughs> okay, so not, and I, must, I mustn't say anything, so, um, so no I'm, I'm, I'm not answering. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not being drawn into that. <laughs> we shall speculate, we shall speculate. Uh, right, I don't want to take any more of your time. You've been so generous uh, with your time with us. Um, I, I will fanboy a little bit and say um you know the work that um, you've done across the games throughout the years uh, have given me you know so many of my favorite memories growing up uh, so i do want to thank you uh, so much for all your work um i'm very excited and looking forward to all your future projects uh, i know everyone here is um everybody go make sure uh, you go and buy ukulele and possible lair it is an incredible game i should be bringing it to the channel very very soon and uh, just once again uh, steve thank you so much for your time and uh, we hope to see your games very soon. It's usually on sale as well, Impossible Lair. It's, it's usually <laughs> a ridiculous price, like 80% off or something like that. It's so it is crazy. It really is a bargain. No, yes. Buy it full price. Buy it full price. No excuse. It's in, it, is, it is an incredible game. It, it, it really is. It, it, you know, it's reviewed extremely highly. It deserves all the praise it got. It's you know, unbelievably polished, colourful, challenging, incredible characters uh you know I, I in my head i just imagine like you know like a, a freeway fight of gruntilda capital b and uh, king k rule you know i just or like <laughs> maybe them having their own game one day you know it's just uh but uh yeah you know um as i say the 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 work you guys continue to do is is, is just incredible and uh i'm very um grateful for for you spending time with us today uh steve so thank you very much sir yeah i've 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 enjoyed it it's always nice to talk about you know the old days when people are interested so yeah thanks for having me on oh no problem thank you so much and everyone so see you next time take care everyone bye bye